hopefully I have enough memory. Now, when we talk about the shape of molecules, the fundamental thing about shapes of molecules is that all shapes are, are kind of guided and determined by this thing that we call, and you've heard of this before, the Vesper theory. Now, I look at this, and I've been doing chemistry for a long time. It always makes me crazy. It doesn't get pronounced the way that it's spelled. I hate that, but I can't do anything about it. It's called the Vesper so, theory. The Vesper theory, yeah. <laughs> yes. I could live with that if, we, if, if chemistry in general just called it a uh, Vesper theory. I'd be all right, because that's the way it looks. Um, but uh, that's what we, we uh, typically call it the Vesper theory. Now, why does this matter? Why is that important? Because uh, if you look at the, the five words that it, it uh, represents, valence shell and electron pair repulsion, what that says is that around the central atom, we always care about the shape around the central atom, You've got bonds and lone pairs. Those pairs of electrons, the valence electrons, try to spread out as far as they can get from each other. Why? Because they repel. The electron pairs repel each other. They push away from each other. So just using that as a foundation, we come up with all the shapes of molecules. So it always goes back to this. We don't ever deviate from Vesper theory. We don't ever go off and try to make up a shape just on our own. We're always trying to maximize the distance between electron pairs. In order to do that, in order to kind of categorize things, we're going to do this uh, with coordination number. Now, I know I don't do coordination number in Chem 1, so this may be a new, new idea to you. But the coordination number uh, is found very easily. When you look at the central atom, you count how many bonded atoms are attached to it, and how many lone pairs, and add them together. It's the number of bonded atoms plus lone pairs on the central atom. The bonded atoms plus lone pairs. Now, it doesn't matter. The bonded atoms, they can be single, double, or triple bonded. That doesn't matter. You don't count how many bonds. You count how many bonded atoms are attached to it. And uh, that can, it can be deceiving. So we'll, we'll address that. In Chem 1, I go up to coordination number of 4. In here, we'll go up to coordination number of 6. So we'll see more, uh, more different varieties of shapes. So we start with the simplest ones, and then we'll go to more complex. Um, the first one with uh, coordination number two, we'll use a very familiar compound, carbon dioxide. To find the shape, you always have to do the dot structure. So we practiced doing dot structure yesterday. We'll go through a few of these. As we go through the hour, uh, some of them I'll just have you do. Some of them I'll just give you. Uh, because uh, if, if we need to save time, that's a quick way to do it. So let's count the number of electrons. Carbon has four. There's two oxygens. Each of those have six valence electrons. So since carbon dioxide would need a top uh, structure that has 16 electrons in it. Now we did this one yesterday. I guess I don't know why I'm going through this. We know from before that carbon dioxide has the two double bonded oxygens and uh, that would give it a coordination number of two. Because you're looking at the central atom, and it's got two bonded atoms to it. And it's got no lone pairs on it. Yes, the molecule has lone pairs, but we only care about what's on the central atom. We only care about the shape around that. Those peripheral atoms, we don't care about the shape around those. We only are interested in the shape around the central atom. So, uh, I do have a uh, like a model of each of these molecules we're going to look at. And how would you describe the shape of that molecule? Yeah, all the uh, atoms are all on the same line. Uh, and if you think about 
electron pairs. You got electron pairs there and there, and they're trying to get as far away from they can as each other from each other, and uh, you can't get any farther away than that. So that's a linear molecule. Anytime you have a coordination number of two, the molecule is linear. Anytime. Those are easy. All right, so I'm going to go on. Can I change the slide? On to coordination number of three. And you can have more than one shape within a coordination number of three. In fact, as the coordination number grows up, you get more and more different shapes within that one. So uh, we'll do this H2CO. For the dot structure of H2CO, We have to count up the number of electrons. We have two hydrogens, plus carbon, plus oxygen. Add those up when we get a structure that has 12 electrons in it. <coughs> so who goes in the middle of H2CO? Does the hydrogen go in the middle because it's written first? Yeah, don't ever put hydrogen in the middle. Why would you not want to? Hydrogen's got one proton. It can't hold eight electrons around it, and the middle atom usually winds up with eight around it. Yeah, that's true. Anytime you have carbon, it's going to go in the middle. Hey, why is it so so mean? It's keep the lead. No, what am I doing? I'm so serious. Who are you? Hey, hey, just. So we put uh, all the atoms yeah. on the central atom with a single bond first, and then. Everybody needs eight electrons around them, except for the hydrogen. Hydrogen's only going to be good with two. That gives it a double gas configuration, which is two. Count the electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I have 14 electrons shown there, but I can only have 12 in my structure. So we'll have to make a double bond. Yeah. So take two atoms that are bonded, erase a lone pair from each, and add that second bond in between. What's the shape? How did these atoms arrange themselves? Well, keep in mind Vesper theory. The atoms are trying to get as far as they can from each other. So how are they going to do that? Yep. No? Yeah, they're going to spread out as far as they can get from one another like this. Right. You notice that they're all in the same plane. It's a flat molecule and a triangle. So the name of this shape would be trigonal planar. So you'd have, even though one of these is a double bond, you can see that there's a double bond in there. Uh, but for the shape, it, it doesn't make any difference how many bonds are there. It's, it's, uh, so you've got the what, carbon in the middle, oxygen, the two hydrogens, they don't look the same. They wouldn't look the same if we could see these in real life. I guess this one is bigger than those other two. Um, so there's the two hydrogens, there's the oxygen. What's the bond angle? 120 degrees, right. And here is, there's a model of uh, the H2CO where the shape is trigonal planar. And the angle would be 120 degrees. You okay with that? It's a triangle shape. That, again, is to try to get all the electron pairs to spread out as far as they can get from each other. Now, there's another shape that we can have within the coordination number of three. Uh, and we're going to see that with this example, HNO. So for the dot structure of HNO, we're going to have one plus five plus six electrons. That's 12 electrons. And who goes in the middle on this one? Uh, the end wood. Yeah, it's farther left. And then put an oxygen on it and a hydrogen on it. Put the lone pair is in there. And count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Once again, we have too, too many electrons. So we'll have to take one out. Get a double bond in there, and that would be the dot structure of HNO. Now keep in mind, when you do a dot structure, the dot structure is fine. All that's good for is to say or to show what atoms are bonded to what and how many bonds there are. 
how many single, double, and triple bonds. That's what dot structures are good for. A dot structure is not meant to show the shape of a molecule. So don't worry about it if it doesn't. What is the shape of this thing? Well, it has a coordination number of three. It's got two bonded atoms on the end and one lone pair. That's a coordination number of three. It had how many atoms are bonded to it plus how many lone pairs? That is going to be bent. Because if the base shape of the coordination number three is a trigonal planar, one of those orbitals in the end is taken up by a lone pair of electrons. So that pair of electrons is still there, and it's still pushing away from these two. So if, if that weren't a lone pair of electrons, this thing would straighten out and be linear. But that lone pair is there. Whoops. <laughs> Took a little energy to break that bond. You see that? <laughs> so yeah, you got that lone pair. It's pushing away, uh, making this thing a bent molecule. There it is. Here we have the lone pair there. And that, the, the presence of that lone pair is what pushes away these other ones and makes that a bent shape. So bent is there to contrast the shape with linear. Okay, now, do you remember what happens with the angle? 8.5. Close. 107.5. 109? Farther. 110. 109. 110. It's not 110. 110. 110. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have a lone pair, like this one is, the lone pair uh, takes up a little more room. It spreads itself out. It's not confined to be between two atoms because it's just a non-body pair of electrons. So the lone pair is always kind of spread out, and they put the squeeze on the remaining bonds. So normally, when you have these small coordination numbers, the squeeze is about a two degree squeeze. You went down by 12 degrees when you said 108. The angle is about 118. You didn't remember that? No. Really, because we talked about it. What, like a year ago? Yeah. It's a long time. It is a long time, I know. Oh, a long time. So yeah, when, when the uh, trigonal planar shape was 120, I uh, put a lone pair in for one of them instead of the atom. Uh, and that's going to squeeze and, and uh, cut down the angles just by a little bit. Two degrees. Okay. So we now have tackled coordination number two, coordination number of three. We're going to go into coordination number four, which is going to be uh, familiar to you because we have our good friend, the methane molecule. And we know the coordination number of four. We've seen these enough. Again, the dot structure is OK that it doesn't reflect the actual, actual uh, uh, shape of the molecule. Do you remember what the shape is when you have four orbitals pushing away from each other? Yes. I'll show you one. We have our molecular models. I think we'll do another activity with molecular models. We did this in organic chemistry, if you remember. We're going to put a bunch together. This is a uh, tetrahedral shape. You have a single atom in the middle, four atoms attached to it. That gives it a coordination number of four. And uh, to get them as spread as far as they can from each other, this is the shape that it's going to make, called a tetrahedral. A tetrahedral. Where do we get tetrahedral from? Well, if you can imagine just connecting these uh, hydrogen atoms. There are five, not five, there are four, that's why it's got the name tetra, and there are four triangular faces on this thing. One's on the bottom, but you got one, two, three, and then four, and they're all equal, equal triangles. So that's where they get the name tetrahedral. Remember the shape? Not the shape, the angle? 90. 107. No, it's not. No, no. 107.5. 108.5. Okay, 109.5. 109.5. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that makes it look like it's a 90 degree angle, but yeah, you got three, three dimensions, and uh, I think this is uh, like a calculus derivation to come up with 109.5. Oh, boy, calculus. <laughs> and the model for uh, CH4, where is it? There it is. Now, I will tell you, I have seen in past years, the AP exam will ask you about um, like limitations of models that we have. They might say something like, um, what is similar about these two and what's different? 